G'day guys, welcome back. I am going to do the Australian Acrylic Pouring Group Challenge for uh, August. This one here, it's really beachy colours. So there's navy, there's a like a bit of a sort of a sky blue. These, because I've just printed them from my computer, it's kind of shown them a little bit lighter than what it did on my computer screen. But navy, blue... This one, you can either do that one as white or an off-white. And then we've got like a um, pale tan kind of colour and then um, a light brown. So those are the colours I'm doing today. They are pretty similar actually to this sandwich pour that I did the other day. It's got white, blue bit of navy um, and then it has got the red oxide here which looking at it now I don't think it was that good a choice it's kind of it's quite dark so I think these colors will look really nice I might have to redo this sandwich one uh, with those with those other colors so I'm ready to go I've got my coffee half a cup of left Oh, this is my nougat. Did you guys see me? I was going to say, well, I said in one of my previous videos I was going to go and make some nougat. This is it. Yummo. Take you up for a close-up. <laughs> Here we go. That's it. It's got the wafer paper on top. Wafer paper on the bottom. And it's kind of a bit sort of sticky. Mm. Have a bite. See? Yum. Almonds and pistachios. My little snack for this morning with my coffee. All right. Move that out of the way. I'm going to do three flip cups. Flip and drags. Because I like the stripies. Sometimes I like just doing one big flip cup and have just a blurred background. But I do like the... Uh, variation with the stripes against the background against the cells so a little bit of everything treadmill silicone for cells uh, my usual pouring medium today 70% glue 30% water this one is Elmer's glue all but school glue works as well I'm just going to do three drops I won't do any in the white I'll tell you about my colours in a minute. And I will I'll jump up on the ladder in a minute and show you the consistency. I'm going by my three second rule. Now make sure that you stir it, stir it, stir it. Otherwise you're going to get big blobs of silicone which turn into big wobbly cells. And once I torch it, then... The cells will come up and then I'll tilt and stretch those cells out. So you don't want you to have really big blobs of silicone in there. But when you start tilting, they get even more stretched out. Now what's going to be a good colour? This one. Right. If you haven't seen my videos before, this is the three second rule. Do a ribbon like that. And then count to see how long the ribbon stays on the top. Let's see if I can not get it in the, the shade. One, two, three. It's gone. One, two, three. One, two, three. See? It's gone. Three seconds. If yours is gone in a second or two seconds, it's too thin. If it's still sitting on top after five seconds, it's too thick. Right. Another coffee, another bite, and I'll start layering. Got two whites. I've separated my blues from my brown tones with another white. It's almost like a sandwich pour. I had to really thin out this white. 30 by 40 centimetre canvas. That's a 12 by 16 inch. And I've got 
one, two, three, four, five, six colours. 50 grams pouring medium, 50 grams painting each, that's 100 grams, by six colours is 600 grams. So 600 grams of mixed paint for this size. You can get away with 500, somewhere between 5 and 600 is fine. Now the white, I'm using all global impastos. Global white, the new batch, is really, really thick. So I put 50 grams of pouring medium, 40 grams of white paint, and then I added 10 grams of my water thinning mix, which is just water and a little bit of Liquitex Flow Aid. And I put it in a big bottle, 10% water, 1% Flow Aid. And I'm hoping that that just um, helps it to flow. Um, well, actually hoping it doesn't split. Because when your paints are maybe a little bit too thick, it's two two reasons I've well, actually probably three reasons I found why paints split. Um, it's either too thick, or the paint quality is not good, and the pigments split, or there's too much water in your mix. So just doing two layers of each color. So I'm hoping that with the Liquitex Flow Aid, just to help with any of those problems with the binders, and hopefully the paint won't split. The navy blue that I usually use, um, it tends to, to split. Well, maybe not split, but how can I describe it? Um, I'll show you what I mean. And it only happens to me when I use a... Um, transparent colour. See the blue inside the white here? See how it's kind of gone a bit wishy-washy looking? It's not a block colour. And that's the transparent colour mixing with the white and it kind of splits like that. The green... Mm, where's some green? The green's also a transparent colour. See how it's done the same, that wishy-washy look? Hmm. Um, and then other colours that are opaque, like in here. So you've got that nice, beautiful block colour. Yeah, so that's what I mean by splitting. But with my navy blue today, I've changed it up a little bit, my recipe. I've called it Prussian Blue. I've tried to make it not a transparent and a semi-transparent. So I've added some, some Cool Blue, which is a transparent. And then I've added some Cobalt, which is a semi-transparent. More than, well, I don't normally use Cobalt in it, but I thought if I try and put a semi-transparent in it, that might help. And then I added some Black, which is an opaque. So I've just added some colours, still trying to make a navy, but to try and get it away from being a transparent. So hopefully, because I added a semi-transparent and an opaque, I'm hoping that that navy blue has now turned from a transparent to a semi-transparent. So I'm hoping it won't split. And um, see how we go. What am I doing? Okay, this one next. Should have used up all my white in that first in my second layer there i think i'm talking too much and not concentrating maybe i should have silent videos no yes no you guys don't want to hear me jabber on do you let me have another bite i'm just going to finish off this white because i should have really put it into my other layer there. 
I left some behind for some reason. Okay. So bitchy these colours, aren't they? Really pretty. So if you guys want to have a go at these colours, please do. And uh, please join the Australian Acrylic Pouring Group. You, by all means, do not have to live in Australia. Just um, join up. Have a go at these colours. Show me what you do. I'd really like to see them. We're a really friendly bunch of people. Everyone's really helpful and kind and friendly. So yeah, come and join us. And don't forget to hit the little bell on the YouTube on my channel so that uh, you'll get notifications every time I put up a video. Righto, that is my colours done. I've got a little bit of white left over from a I don't even know where it's from, but I'm just going to cover that. I don't like having a, a colour on the bottom because when I flip it over, that colour sort of sticks to the surface and it doesn't move and there's only a tiny bit of it and I kind of lose that bottom colour. So just pop a bit there. Flip these over and then while they're sitting there for a minute, I'll just tell you about my other colours that I've used. Right, -o, so we have white. That's the thick one. Um, and then this one, it's called Flesh. And then that's raw, raw Sienna. They're a little bit too similar and I kind of needed to make it a little bit lighter. So I just added a touch of white to it to get that slightly paler kind of sand look and then as I said the raw sienna and this one's called southern seas it's just a beautiful bluish it's not a turquoise because this this um, challenge isn't about turquoise it's about blue but it's not a bright blue so and then of course that dark blue the navy which I call Prussian blue I don't actually have any Prussian blue so I don't know what it looks like I'm assuming it's a really dark blue although someone said it had a bit of a does it have a purple tinge or a grey tinge I don't know I don't think I've ever used Prussian blue but I like the shade that I made all right let's do this flip and drag I call it a flip and drag because I'm flipping the cup and then I'm dragging it down. There's blue there. I'm going to turn this one around and do it the other way. It's just bizarre how you layer the paint in the cup exactly the same except the blue is coming out in the bottom hopefully the blue will come out oh well the blue will come out hopefully down here <laughs> let's see oh no it's different why is that i always get so amused when this happens <laughs> i don't know okay move my cups out of the way now, as usual, I'm just going to tilt to cover one side of the canvas before I torch. Hmm, pretty colours. Glad I got that more blue in the middle there. Now, I want to try and keep this blue down here as well because I think that's where most of it's going to be. So let's tilt down here first. And don't just tilt straight down because you're going to lose all this off the edge. So try and go zigzag so that you can fill in 
those triangles before you lose too much over the edge. See how my little triangles are getting smaller? Whether or not that actually helps, uh, who knows, but that's what I do. Just cover that corner, cover that corner. Okay, now just bring the weight of the paint back just a touch so it doesn't all flow over the edge. And I like to tilt away from myself, so just turn that around. It looks pretty. Actually, it's probably bluer than I was expecting. But I will tilt. I'll tilt that blob off there. I'm going to tilt these corners off. I'll just pour a little bit of white just on those corners just to help the paint flow over. Never take your cup across the canvas. It might drip. Always takes your, you know, dirty hands that may drip and your cups around like that so nothing drips onto the center. Right, where's my torch? This one's nearly empty. But I want to use it up so I can put a fresh can on for my workshop tomorrow. But a beginner's workshop tomorrow, so we're doing a swipe and a flip cup. Actually, I might have people wanting to do these colours tomorrow. You never know. You never know what people, what colours people want to do until they get here and they have a look at the wall of paint and then they can choose what they want to do, the colours they want to do. There's always, always somebody that chooses colours that I know are not going to work. You know, they want all the brights, they want the blue, they want the red, they want the yellow, they want the orange, they want the green. And I know it's just going to turn to mud. And I try to persuade them to, you know, go with complementary colours, but nope. They do it. Can you do? You can only advise, can't you? You can't tell people what to do. You can just advise. And if they don't want to take your advice, well, there's nothing I can do. Look at this. See, I'm getting really, really small cells up here. One of my colours is obviously too thick. I wonder if it's that. Um, might be this one. One of them's a bit thick, and I'm not getting much through. That was too close. You've got a colony there, got too close. If you mix this too thick, you get really, really tiny little cells popping up straight away. And yes, that's a good thing because you want to be able to stretch them out without them being overstretched. But if it's too thick, uh, they don't make nice rings. This area here, I, I can torch afterwards, I think. I think I'll just leave that now they are coming through slowly this is more with your torching when you torch rather go up high 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 and go over it a few times and let the cells come up slowly rather than getting too close getting too close you'll get caterpillars because it's too much heat at once um, and you get colonies as well I like my cells to be separate, have space around them. Okay, now, same thing. Zigzag. You don't want to go straight down because if you just go straight down, your cells are just going to get elongated. So you need to go side to side. That stretches them out horizontally. And then you tip down to the long edge there and that stretches them out vertically and hopefully keeps them as round as possible. Now I'm going to go over there because I want to stretch everything out a little bit. Over there, plenty of paint so I can stretch. You want to be able to stretch your paint out, otherwise your cells are too small. Um, I'm just wondering if I've got enough paint to get rid of that. Looks like my blue is still separating, but not as bad. Is it not as bad? I can't tell yet. Let me turn this around. 
Oh, it's so beachy. <gasps> look at that, you guys. It just looks like a beach. Love these colours. So now all I'm doing is I'm getting the weight because it was all up here, just moving it back to the centre a little bit. And what I look for, I look at the size of the cells up here and I look at the size of the cells down here and then I decide if I need to you know, move one side or the other so that they're evenly sized. weird things happening in here I wonder if that's the um, the Liquitex flow aid that's making my cells act a bit like the GAC 800 you know the kidney shaped cells because the GAC 800 does that and I put the Liquitex flow aid in this pore and see normally I don't get mucky cells like that I'm wondering if it is that it's another experiment to do just use plain water because that yeah as i said i don't normally get those weird shaped cells okay i'm going to torch a little bit just to pop some bubbles basically cells want to pop up that's fine but just to pop some bubbles okay now then let me check my corners now you can see ever so slightly where the blue and the brown or kind of the, the orangey these colors make mud turquoise and orange browns and orange oh sorry blues and orange they make mud so you have to be really careful if you're using those colors so it's a bit of a tricky color scheme this challenge this month but if you make your paints thick enough and you don't over tilt you shouldn't have a problem your colors should remain separate if you're doing these colors and it all turns to mud then that's um, your colors are too thin or you've overstretched them, you know, not enough paint and you've overstretched everything. So, but yeah, happy with the colours. Just not in love with these weird things. I, I think, now that's happened a few times to me, oh, I'm trying to get some of the orangey tone, sandy tone to go there. Here's a bit. Um, I think maybe it is that Liquitex Flow Aid. You can see how the blue is still splitting, especially as it stretches to try and go over the edge there. It hasn't split as much as it splits previously, like it's much better. Um, so I think I'm on the right track with the navy. Um, I don't know that there's a lot more I can do to it. You know, I still want it to be navy. But it certainly showed up more. A lot of times when I use navy, it just all disappears because it's the transparent colour. The opaques really take over. But uh, yeah, it's pretty, isn't it? Certainly beachy. Mm. Put a couple of lounge chairs there. There's people swimming in the water. Kids paddling in the shallows. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to take you down for a close-up. These colours, I think, would look stunning as a sandwich, Paul. So people, take note, those of you that are coming to my intermediate class, if you want to do sandwich pours with these colours, I think they will be stunning. Okay, so there's the navy that's popped through. Still got the white. The white hasn't been lost. Sometimes I lose the white in my pores, but it was a nice consistency. Got some blue cells there with the white rings around them. Lovely background. 
that uh, raw sienna kind of takes on a little bit of an orange hue. It's lightened with a bit of white in some areas. Doggies. Someone just came through the front door, set them off. And then we got some more blues. That's really pretty, isn't it? I'm happy with that. I do want to do these colours again now without the Liquitex Flow Aid and um, to see what happens see if it's that's the reason it's causing. Let me take you in, see if I can show you a close up. See those weird cells in the in the middle there? They're not round. That's what the GAC does. Yeah, I don't I don't like those. I like myself to be nice and round. Seems to be with the raw sienna that it's done that. I don't know why. I'll have to check to see what transparency the raw sienna is. So there you go. I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching. Have a go at these colours. Pop them up on the Australian Acrylic Pouring Group page on Facebook. Uh, we don't have any winners or losers. It's just challenge yourself with, with these colours and enjoy it. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. See you for the next one. Bye for now.